What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 6 of our Bayer Leverkusen Let's Play here in Football Manager 2019. Today it's going to be the midway through the season episode. We're going to reflect on the last kind of six months, half a season that we've been here now. Uh, talk about some goings on and off the pitch going into the winter break as well as play our final game before that break uh, which is going to be against Hertha Berlin. Since we were last here we have played two matches. These two games, two 2-0 two wins. You can see here bouncing back well after some patchy form to say the least. But we started off with a win against Frankfurt. Uh, Alario grabbing both goals in this game. Uh, normally I'd show you the goal highlights for this match but... The replay doesn't work for some reason for this game when I click watch goals. Nothing happens, so you'll just have to imagine them. They were both bicycle kicks from 40 yards out. And uh, yeah, Alario with a brace, a convincing performance. He got man of the match off the back of that. And I was a very happy bunny. Going into the next game, I do have the goals for this one. Not quite, perhaps quite so interesting. Kevin Volland scoring from the penalty spot. Rasmus Falk getting another goal. He really is a goal-scoring machine, is Falk. He also picked up man of the match, playing the centre, attacking mid position for us. Good performance this one. Uh, away from home against Schalke, definitely not an easy game. Schalke, at least when I think of you know the big successful German teams, they're a team that kind of pop into my mind as a team to take note of. So to win away from home as convincingly as we did was very, very nice indeed. So anyway, those are the games since we were last here. Looking at the Bundesliga table, we are still in third... But things are changing. You can see it's a three-way tie at the top of the table on 32 points. Yes, Leipzig and Bayern have slipped up in the last couple of games. And they actually played against each other. You can see here Leipzig getting a 1-1 draw against Mainz. And then drawing 0-0 away from home against Bayern. And if we look at Bayern, on the other hand, they drew their last two games as well. They drew against Hanover away from home. And then, of course, they played Leipzig. So... Good results as far as we're concerned. They definitely do us a big favour. And well, in terms of the Bundesliga, we're still right up there. We are in the title fight, which is nice to be able to say. And well, it's crazily close. And even Dortmund behind on 30 points. Yes, they've played one game more, but they're still in the fight as well. So this could turn into a very, very tasty season. But regardless, very pleased with where we find ourselves right now. Anyway, before we go any further, the Europa League draw has happened. And as you can see here, we've got drawn against Bordeaux, um, which is, to be honest, one of the nicest draws we could have got. They managed to get through their group relatively comfortably, finishing second. But they're 17th in the league. So, I don't know, I'd back us to beat Bordeaux. I feel like that was one of the best draws we could have got. Certainly not a, a pushover of a French side, but a team that I don't fear perhaps as much as some of the other names that we could have possibly been drawn against. So, let's take a look at the squad overview. I feel like at the halfway point, it's always good to kind of just go through in detail, look at everything that's been going on. And to be honest, the thing that will strike you most, first and foremost, is just the sheer amount of rotation, the amount of players who have played lots of games. In terms of the players who haven't rotated, Rodeski, obviously, playing in goal, a player who has just nailed down the goalkeeper position for us. Our alternate options, we have this guy, whose name I've never had to say before. We'll go with Kirschbaum. It sounds good, doesn't it? 31 years old, backup goalkeeper. There's not a lot to say about him, really. The other player we've got is Osman Hadzikic. Uh, who we signed on a free transfer at the start of the season. Um, he's an okay third-choice goalkeeper. Some of you might be wondering about Ozkan. He kicked up a load of fuss about wanting to leave the club, about the fact he was homesick. I tried to sell him. No one wanted him. He was desperate to leave the club. His contract's up at the end of the year. Um, so he's just kind of sat in the under-19s having a party. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the goalkeeper situation. In terms of other players yet to make an appearance this year, the only other players are two strikers. The first player we have is Po Jan Palo, uh, the Finnish striker. I don't hate this guy. I just don't think he's a great striking option. Obviously, with our system, we always play with one striker. That's kind of forced upon us, I feel like, just because of how talented our attacking midfielders are, you know, in the centre, out wide. Naturally, it's kind of difficult to play with a left attacking mid, a right attacking mid, and a centre attacking mid, and then somehow get two strikers in a formation that's balanced. So striking rotation has been a problem. Uh, Poyan Palo, you can see here, is loan listed. He is a backup player at the end of the day, so I'm not too concerned about his lack of first team football. The other player we have is Felin here who's in on loan from Anderlecht I don't know why Leverkusen have all these players in the striker position 
But regardless, he's just a player who's in on loan. I can't terminate his loan, so he kind of just sits here and collects a paycheck for the year. So that's that. Obviously, Dejan uh, Jojo, I, I'm not going to try and say his name. We'll just call you De Deji. It's easier. But the Serbian striker, I've tried to give him a little bit of football. He wanted to go out on loan. He might still go out on loan this year. But, of course, the Serbian youngster picked up for £850,000 at the start of the year. I've given him two appearances. He's not really taken those opportunities when they've come his way. So, um, yeah, a player who we might look to loan out in January. Besides the striker position, though, I feel like we've done a pretty good job when it comes to rotation on the whole. I mean, you kind of look at our team here it, it's a well-balanced team it's a team with plenty of depth um and for the most part i feel like we've managed the, the team and the dynamics pretty well you can see here a few players complaining uh Arangis, uh bellarabi and alario of course Arangis is just a player who's been struggling with fitness that is the only reason why he hasn't played as much as he'd like um but Obviously, I, I want to keep him happy, so I'm continuing to play him. The other two players kicking up a fuss, Alario and Bellarabi, I'm kind of in two minds about. Bellarabi, I don't hate him, but I don't think he's a perfect player for us, you know, in terms of what he offers for his wages. £86,000, he's one of the biggest earners at the club. I know he's been performing very well in real life as of late, but for me, right here, right now, I just don't kind of see what he offers we're trying to sell him on Southampton and Wolfsburg both interested in him honestly if I could get 15 million for him that would be some pretty good money that I would try and reinvest in January and well the other player Alario he needs to leave to find first team football he's a player who's been scoring goals for us but ultimately I don't want players who are unhappy here you'll notice he's had a bid on him he is on his way out of the door folks 30 million pounds plus a 15 percent uh sell-on clause to Newcastle that is the deal that is on the table right now. Whether or not that will definitely go through remains to be seen. But I don't know how to feel about this. On one hand, it's a bit disappointing that I couldn't keep hold of him because he has got some goals for us in the Bundesliga when we've needed him to. But ultimately, I prefer Kevin Volland over him. He wants to play first team football. He's on big wages. And £30 million is just such a massive amount of money for a backup striker that I can't really reject it. And also, if he was to leave, it might open up opportunities for Deji to come into the team. And also, uh, another player we've got joining us who I've never really mentioned. I probably should have mentioned him at some point. Uh, and that is Lincoln here, the 18-year-old striker who we agreed to sign a while ago. I kind of forgot about him until recently where I was going through my transfers in, uh, having signed a load of American regions, which I will talk about in a second. And I was kind of like, oh yeah, we've got him. And of course, he's joining uh, next month in, at the start of January. So once we get Lincoln in, we might even have Alario already replaced. I kind of like Lincoln as a player here, a good striker. The scouts don't rate him as highly as I do, but he's a player who I've had good experiences with in past FMs. He's got room to improve. He is only 18 as well, so we could easily reinvest that £30 million that we get from Alario elsewhere. The other players we've signed here are all American regen kind of players. They're all punts. Uh, if you don't know... Essentially, uh, the American kind of non-MLS clubs, um, they obviously have players that get produced to be drafted in, and you can kind of just sign them all. So that's what I've done. Uh, you approach them on free transfers. They're kind of the kind of scatter fire approach, I guess, here, where I've signed a load of them who have been playing for the national teams in the under-21. So you've got Desmet here, who's a Belgium under-21 international, age 17. Uh, Santini, you can see here, playing regularly for Canada. My scouts quite like this guy. And um, there's some pretty good players to pick up here. So I've gone through, I've picked up some of the, some of the ones my scouts found me. Uh, if you'd like to see me do a video on this separately, kind of the American regen scouting method, let me know in the comments. That's definitely something I can do. I'm not going to cover it here. And of course, uh, besides those guys and Lincoln, we also have Markovic joining us. So another centre-back to add to the collection. And... Um, in terms of what this might mean in terms of squad dynamics, if I am to add another centre-back, I might look to move on Bender, uh, and that being uh, Lars Bender, um, just because that would mean that Koa is probably going to have to play centre defensive mid. This guy, massive wages for him. He's 29. There was a little bit of interest from Bayern at the start of the season, and I, having seen some other people talking about their FM saves uh, in the past um, on Twitter and stuff, I know that often people have managed to get this guy sold. So if I could get like 20 million for him, it might be a little bit tempting. As good as he's been in his nine appearances, um, he does always throw a bit of a conundrum in for us, I guess, when it comes to rotation. And uh, when you consider that we also have Koa here, and if I just kind of do a direct comparison between him and Lars Bender, there's not a massive difference between them. And with Koa being five years his junior on, well, almost a third of the wages, 
it does kind of make Lars Bender a tricky proposition to justify, so we might explore that as an avenue. Besides that, the rest of the team has been pretty good, to be honest. The average ratings for a few players, perhaps a tad bit disappointing in Havertz, I'd like to see doing a little bit more. But you can see, just looking at the overall appearances, everyone's getting a lot of football, you know. There's a lot of rotation going on here. Besides players like Almiron and Weisser, and of course the youngsters like Tonali, um, everyone's getting football. The injuries obviously have kind of forced that upon us, but generally speaking, I think our squad management has been pretty good. In terms of goal scorers, Kevin Volland and Elario leading the way here. Of course, Elario on his way out. Besides them, though, Rasmus Falk, seven goals for him. He has been a real bargain. If you can pick him up from Copenhagen at the start of your game for 1.8 million, I recommend doing it. It's certainly a, a player who I originally brought in kind of thinking, you know, backup, centre attack in mid, can also play out wide. Just a good utility man. Actually, what he's turned into for us is a player who, when we're struggling for a goal or if fitness is a problem and I need that kind of go-to kind of backup winger who's going to play second fiddle to Leon Bailey and um, obviously Brandt, this is the guy I turn to and he has put in a shift and put in performances. Obviously, Volant has been performing well. Nine goals to his name in all competitions. Also, three assists. I, I'm pretty happy with how Kevin's done. Aran Giz has been doing well from the penalty spot. Five goals for him. Leon Bailey... Five goals, six assists. Julian Brandt, of course, out injured at the moment, still out for almost two months. You can see here, four goals to his name, one assist. I'd like a little bit more from him, particularly when you compare him to Leon here, and you look at the fact they have played a similar amount of games. The difference between the two is kind of quite noticeable. In terms of the best average ratings, you can see here, Vendel's actually been the top performer, currently out injured, of course. Um, on his way kind of back to fitness now, uh, he was suspended for today's game, which is a little bit of a shame. We're going to have to try and work around that. Besides that, Alario has been the standout performer. Um, I know a lot of people are going to look at the fact I'm selling Alario and question it. I think the £13 million, first and foremost, is just a big kind of motivator behind that decision. Also, the fact that he has been complaining about... And also, as good as his ratings have been, very often he has come on against tiring teams where he's going to have a bit of an advantage or he's played against some of the smaller Bundesliga teams, you know, when Volland's not been fit and I needed to rotate the side. So as a result, I do feel like his stats have been a little bloated. In terms of other performers, Lucas Romero's done pretty well, to be honest. Kind of become our utility man at right back for a lot of this season with Weisser out injured. But 11 appearances so far, a 7.09 rating. Considering I kind of brought him in to be a centre mid, who also handily played right back, he's done a good job for us at right back for the most part this season. So very, very happy with him. Anyway, let's talk all about the kind of players who have been developing the best. And there's three names who I want to talk about the most here because they have just consistently been performing. The first one, Sandro Tonali, has improved so, so much this year already. Obviously, he's developed professional personality through our mentoring, which just to remind you guys, you might have missed the episode where I talked about the mentoring, but... You can see here he is part of a group with Lars Bender who has significant influence and that has made him more professional. He's been very, very impressive in training just across the board, playing a lot of football for the under-19s, but recently we have made him more readily available for our first team. Elsewhere, Kai Havertz, despite not performing necessarily great on the pitch, he has looked really, really good in terms of overall development, this guy. He's still only 19 years old, loads of room to improve a player. It feels like every week I'm being told about how great he's been training. And also, Retzos, um, a player who started the season injured, has kind of featured a little bit in the team, but more than happy to be kind of a backup rotation option. I feel like this guy could be a long-term solution to our centre-back position. Maybe alongside Markovic, I feel like he has a lot to offer. Only 20 years old, regular international for Greece. And uh, yeah, he is another player. He's just been kind of always impressing and always... Uh, I've been told about how well he's been doing in training. I mean, you can see here, Tonali, training rating of 10. Uh, perhaps not so surprisingly, Poyan Palo, the uh, the player who's not played at all for us, the Finnish striker, not such a good training rating. But yeah, those are the three standout players, I feel like, Tanali, Retzos and Havertz in terms of players who have just been performing superbly for us. So we looked a little bit at our own stats. I always think it's worth looking at the Bundesliga stats. So we take a look here at team stats. You can see Leipzig leading the way on 31 goals. We are second on 27 goals. Maybe a little bit surprising to see Werder Bremen in third and also Bayern, who of course are top of the table with 25 goals scored. So lacking a little bit behind Leipzig and ourselves in that regard. But defensively, 
they have kind of more than made up for that. If we look at least conceded, Bayern only conceded 10 this year. We actually have the joint second best defence, although it's joint with a lot of other teams. 15 goals the amount we've conceded. Schalke, who we beat 2-0. You can see here, they're down in 12th in the league, but they have a very, very good defence. Elsewhere, just looking at team stats, average possession were right up there on 56%. Most passes completed were down here in 5th. In terms of uh, crosses... We're not that high in here. I mean, you can see we're not on here at all. So that's something to be aware of. Maybe we need to look at how we cross the ball in a little bit more. Maybe look to uh, cross the ball lower as opposed to always floating it up in the air because Kevin Volland and obviously with Alario going out, we don't really have a great player in the air. Volland, he's not known for his jumping ability. He's not a salmon, put it that way. Um, so, yeah, we can maybe look at that. But generally speaking, we're looking pretty good. I mean, you can see here we have the most headers won. We win, we win a lot of the ball in the midfield from goal kicks and stuff, which is very nice. We have committed the most fouls. I feel like that's always going to happen given our style of play. But we do also have a very high tackle kind of percentage here of 83%. In terms of tackles won, you can see here Leipzig on 84%, the only team with a better tackling um, kind of percentage than us. In terms of other bits and pieces, we are the only team to win two games in a row as of late. I mean, this is how competitive the league is. Um, and, I mean, we've gone through a lot of this other stuff here. Net transfer spent by and leading the way. We have spent £16 million now. So that's not entirely surprising. We have the most penalties scored. And as I already mentioned, we've conceded 15. If we just look at player overview stats, you can see here Lewandowski leading the way in the league with 11 goals. Timo Werner in behind on 10. Uh, in terms of where we lie, Kevin Volland on 7 for us. Not the craziest amount, but one thing that is definitely of note is just the kind of even spread, I guess, of goals and assists across a variety of our players. Obviously, that's a lot of the time fed into the fact that we rotate our team so heavily. Um, but yeah, just worth being aware of that, perhaps. Best hitting the target, Volland leading the way. The man knows how to hit the target, it seems. Uh, in terms of assists, we're not even on the charts here. I mean, the fact we've not got a player with five or more assists, perhaps a little bit concerning, but as I said, it's kind of spread across everyone. Distance covered, no one there. Most dribbles, no one there. Key tackles, Sven Bender, he likes to tackle. 16 key tackles in 13 games. That is not too shabby, if I might say so myself. In terms of most clean sheets, Radeski, you can see here, joint third with six for the season. Not a bad total, but could be a little bit better, perhaps. And um, yeah, there's some of the general stats. You can see here, obviously, uh, Nuremberg struggling this season. Uh, Lars Bender uh, on the yellow card front, five for him. I mean, he, he, we might win that award. That'd be a good one to win. But generally speaking, I feel like it, it kind of speaks for itself or how we don't really have anyone featuring really prominently at the top of the player charts. Just across the board, everyone's chipping in. I mean, you look at the assisters here. We have, what, five players with three assists, three with two assists, and then even more with one assist as well. It's really Leon Bailey who's the only player kind of consistently kind of providing assists. It just shows the variety of goals that we do score, but that is not too bad at all. So, at the halfway point, we do find ourselves in third. Some of you might be wondering, what are the board thinking? Well, they're, they're happy. They're very happy. They're pleased with how we're playing. They're pleased with the transfers we've done. The only thing they're concerned about is the philosophies, which I do find a little bit puzzling, if I'm honest. You can see here they're not as happy as they could be with first-team youngster signings, which I think is a tad unfair, because when you actually look at our transfer history... Um, we, we brought in, obviously, Dejan, he comes in. We brought in Tenali. We brought in, obviously, all the regens at the start of the save. Players like Friday Okoye, who has continued to develop and looks like a very, very good player at only 15 years old. And then, of course, with the players we've got coming in as well, Markovic and Lincoln. I don't know. To me, it seems harsh to say that we haven't stuck to that philosophy. But may, maybe I'm biased. Let me know if you disagree in the comments. Um, in terms of kind of overall performances in the competitions, they're happy with how we're doing everywhere, which is great to see. Bundesliga, we need a top four finish for the Champions League. We're still in the German Cup. We're still in the Europa League. You know, we're in everything that we started in, which is good. And we're still in the title fight, which is equally as pleasing to be able to say. So I've talked about the kind of overall board happiness, which generally speaking is extremely positive. I've talked about the squad, some of the team stats, who's performing well. One last thing I want to talk about before we go into today's game is going to be the tactics, um, which to be honest, I don't have a whole lot to say on it because I'm kind of happy with how we are doing right now, which might sound a little odd to say as I hear, sit here thinking about what tactical system we'll play. But, of course, we've had three systems this year. We've had the Gengen press with the 4-2-3-1. We've had the Gengen press with the defensive midfielder. And then a slightly slower-paced but positive 
brand of football, the more tiki taka style that we've sometimes deployed where we've had, you know, tiring players. In terms of my general thoughts on them, obviously the fact that we're still in every competition, the fact that we're joint top of the league means that the tactic tactics that we've been using have been working. Uh, very much at the moment at least sticking with kind of the default vanilla uh, tactical styles. We might look into a little bit further. I mentioned before about the crossing percentage being a little bit low. So actually we might start just focusing on getting some lower crosses into the box. Might look to tweak some of these things as the season goes on. But at the moment there hasn't been anything that's really jumped out to me as being... A massive cause for concern. We have had some injuries, you know, players like Almiron have been out for a long time, Bellarabi's missed football, uh, Vendel's missed football, Julian Brand, Vice are obviously out for a very long period of time. Maybe that comes down to our style. I feel like I've done a pretty good job of rotating the team. Uh, I've seen a lot of people complaining about injuries on Football Manager during the beta. I feel like, generally speaking, we've done a reasonably good job of managing all of that. Obviously, this game, we do have a bit of a problem. That is that Vendel is suspended and Troy Cowell's injured. So, Retsos, unfortunately, the only player who can play left-back, uh, just other than Jedvai, who is still injured himself. We've, we've, we've had injuries at fullback. I think that's the best uh, thing you can say and the most accurate thing you can say. In terms of the rest of the team, though, going into today's game, Rodeski... Not a lot to say about him. He's been great for us. Sam Bender and Jonathan Tart doing great. I was hoping Tart would improve a little bit more, but he's still a fantastic player for us. The 6.96 average rating in the league, certainly not anything to scream and shout about. Similarly on Sven Ben, you know, he's put in those key tackles, but I can't recall many times where I've got, well, jumped out my seat with joy at the tackles he's made. Um, again, Sven Bender, I love him. And I know that, you know, a lot of Dortmund fans will love him. And I, I think feel like, you know, between him and Lars, they've kind of got a nice little story going on. But they are two players in their low 30s, alongside Arangiz, who's 29. With some of the younger players we've got coming in, they might only have six months this year left at the team before I maybe look to ship them on, you know, if the right transfer deal came about, which might be a little bit harsh. They have been very good for the mentoring so far, and it would certainly be... Um, potentially detrimental to get rid of two players leading the hierarchy but at the same time I want to bring in some young blood but at the moment they're doing okay I've talked about Romero right back he's done a job for us Arangis and Bender doing great there Polino um, a player who I expected big things from he hasn't actually improved that much throughout this year which has been a tad disappointing I've been training him as an advanced forward um, hopefully he can continue to improve here hopefully you know, he's going to continue to be happy with the first team football he's getting because for a while he was complaining about it. We've given him 11 games. Obviously, some of those appearances on off the bench, but he's been featuring regularly. Similarly to Havertz, you know, Havertz has um, been developing well but hasn't been put in the performances. Would love to see him step up. Leon Bailey, bit of an unsung hero, of course, got that winning goal against Bayern back at the start of the season. He shipped him with a lot of goals and a decent amount of assists. I'm hoping that he's going to continue to do that for us, maybe in slightly higher quantities, but we'll have to see how things go there. Voland, um, seven goals for him, of course, has been rotating with Alario, not necessarily for fitness, but just to keep Alario happy. I've not done a good enough job there. Uh, we might even be leaning on Voland more so than we have been already to be the leading goal scorer in this team and really kind of, you know, make that job his own. But anyway, that's the team we've got. On the bench, lots of options, lots of familiar names. Tonali is going to be named on there, Rasmus Falk. We have game changers. Anyway, we're going to get into this game. We're taking on Hertha Berlin. It's a big game for us. Let's see what we can do. We're going to get straight into this, playing the 4 2 3 1. We've come off the back of two away wins. We're back at home today. Let's see what we can do. They've got Marco Gruic at centre defence in mid. He has the highest average rating in their team. He's a good player, the Serbian centre mid on loan from Liverpool. Elsewhere, Kalu, a player we perhaps have to be wary of, but overall, this is a team that we should be beating. They're not a team challenging towards the top of the table, and uh, we need to win these kind of games convincingly if we really think that we're in a title fight. You know, If we really want to uh, be considered title contenders, this is the kind of game where we do have to turn up, perform, get in, get out, make it as comfortable as we can, and uh, you know, get, get the three points, no nonsense. But... It's a big but. We have struggled with that this year. There's been games where we just haven't turned up. I talk, think back to the game against Freiburg, um, the game against uh, Augsburg. I, I, there's, there's games where we've not turned up. So maybe we can turn that around today. That would be the dream. You can see early on, they're yet to have a shot. We've had 10, 5 on target after half an hour. We're looking good. Kai Havertz has immediately picked up an injury. 
I don't want to risk it. I'll bring in Falk for him. Falk, of course, a player who I've talked about his goal-scoring capabilities. I feel like he's not done it as often in live commentaries as he has in other games for us. He's got a time to shine here and now. We'll see what he can do, but it looks like at half-time, nil-nil. Not a classic, I, I, I think is the way the pundits would describe this one at half-time. They have done absolutely nothing. We've done nothing either, though, with the chances that we've had. We need to step it up here in this second half. It might even uh, change just our mentality to be more attacking, just to try and get maybe a little uh, further into the box and, well, perhaps try and create a little bit more with a bit more intent. As Polino, go, he goes for the speculative shot, I think is the best way to describe that. And now Lucas Romero gets injured. I mean, fullback injuries are a nightmare right now. Jedvai is available to play. He's playing with protective equipment. You may remember that from last episode. Um, but I didn't really want to play him if I could avoid to play him. Unfortunately, I can't avoid it. He's got to come in. And, well, we only have one sub left here. And as much as I want to make it to really try and make an impact on this game, I feel like it's too soon. You know, with the injuries that we've been experiencing, I don't want to make a change and then not have a third sub in my back pocket. For if we get an injury as... Wow, that was a speculative effort. I was about to complain about a stupid long shot, but ultimately the keeper had to pull off a cracking save to deny the goal. I think it was Paulino with the ball in. And, uh, well, Leon Bailey trying to get the ball in the box. First cross isn't going to work out. Second chance here from the other side of the pitch. Whips it in back post. Arangiz can't get there. Paulino, can you, can you do something with it? Goes to Lars Bender who tries to go back wide, but they deal with it again. Hertha Berlin looking very sturdy here at the back. Yes, they've not created anything going forward. Yes, they've had more of possession. But, well, despite their, well, I guess, lack of attacking intent, you'd have to say they've more than made up for that in their defensive steal right now. But, well, we have a chance. Paulino, tight, tight angle, buries it. Take a bow. Volland with the assist. Nice finish by Paulino. Of course, another player who could potentially step up into Alario's role as the go-to striker for us. Right now, he's kind of locked in in that left inside forward role with Julian Brandt's in, uh, or jo injury. But um, we'll have to see, you know, with him potentially being fit around February time, how uh, we might feature Paulinho more in his striker position, which is probably the position I see him longer term slotting into for our team. Anyway, 1-0 up. I would take it. We do have one sub left in this game. Their team is very, very tired. I'm going to make the change here. In terms of what we're going to do, uh, I don't know what to do. Um, I think we'll take off Arangiz, who's on a booking, just to be safe. And we'll bring in Tanali for him. Give the young Italian a bit of a run out. He's got good pace. He's got good vision. I feel like even if he's lacking a bit in terms of technicals going forward and defensively, his raw speed is going to make him kind of well suited to that box-to-box -box midfielder role. So five minutes for him to run out and show us what he's all about. Let's see what he can do. Hertha Berlin still in with a shout. 1-0, it, it would be dangerous to assume that we're high and dry here, although we are now coming away with the ball on the counter-attack. Leon Bailey, what a run this has been. Can there be an end product? It's blocked away. Arangiz, though, through, should finish it. What a save by Jarstein in goal for them there. And, I mean, you can't knock it. That was a fantastic stop by the keeper, tipping it around the post. I thought for sure it was a goal. Only our second clear-cut chance of the game... And it's wasted. And well, Arangis from the set piece, the corner, getting whipped in, almost scored. That was a half chance. But despite what has been a slightly underwhelming performance all in all, we get the win. And that is the most important thing at the end of the day. Three points going our way. A good win, boys. Well done. They're 17th. We've got to be winning by more than that. Lucas Romero out for 8 to 10 days. Havertz only out for 1 to 3 days. That's nice. Of course, we now go into the, the winter break. Uh, to think things over and think about what we've done. In terms of the games here, you can see Leipzig did win their game. Bayern are going to be kicking off slightly later here, so we'll continue and see how they get on in their match. They're taking on Frankfurt. Um, and, wow, Frankfurt win 2-0. That is a massive, massive result for us. Ourselves and Leipzig now top of the table on 35 points. And, uh, well, you can see here with that win, because of Dortmund already having played, we've extended our gap over them to five points. We are in a great position now. Uh, what is almost the halfway point um, to fight for the title, I feel like, after Christmas. That has got to be the aim, ultimately. What a shock that is, though. Frankfurt winning 2-0 against Bayern, and it looks like they outplayed Bayern for the most part. They had more shots, 50-50 possession. 
They made it count. Pineside very tired. I guess the fixture's catching up with everyone. But of course, a winter break now for us all to enjoy. In terms of when we'll be, back, we'll be back, guys, I think we'll come back for the potentially the game against Bayern at the start of February. That's a little way away. It's after the winter break, um, but it will give us a few games back to kind of see how we get on. We've got Mitch and Gladbach, uh, Nuremberg, who are down in 18th, and also Wolfsburg in 16th. They're games that really we need to be winning comfortably. And, uh, well, Bayern at home could prove to be a very pivotal game in terms of the title race, uh, albeit if it's only the 20th game of the season. Anyway, that is going to be all from me today. Hopefully you enjoyed this slightly more comp comprehensive episode wrapping up what's been going on off the pitch and also kind of just reflecting a little bit more on the first half of the season here at, uh, well, Bayer Leverkusen. If this is something you'd like to see more often, please do let me know. Obviously, my first time really managing in Germany, not that many leagues that I've managed in before having a winter break. Sometimes I think it's quite nice just to have a longer ramble about things that are going on, my thoughts going into January, um, you know, what ideas might be buzzing around in my head. Do let me know your thoughts. And yeah, that is going to be all from me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.